welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith, at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. The Living Artist is supported by Filling the Well, a new podcast from Arts Midwest created to nourish, provoke, and inspire artists and art leaders. In this five-part series, hear from the creative changemakers as they share their takes on how to shift power dynamics, avoid burnout, build authentic community, share resources, and advocate for support. With each episode, you'll find links to explore these ideas further and act in your community. Listen wherever you get your podcasts or check out artsmidwest.org slash filling the well. known fact little known facts plural yes that was a song i just made up on the spot and yes that was well no and no those were not spoons i was playing at the end they were forks a little behind the music there wow that was just a little something that i was doing to get warmed up and fuck around a bit and just kind of get all the craziness out of my brain for lyrics, it's all about taking a concoction of weird supplements and things to make myself feel better. But uh, that's a story for another episode. For now, stick a fork in that song. It's done. <laughs> See what I did there? That's why you're here, right? You're here to listen to bad music that I came up with on the spot. Isn't that what this podcast is all about? Oh, wait, it's about art and about being an artist and making a living as an artist. So what are we going to talk about today? That's a good question. Today's topic is being resourceful or use, being, take, being, you're taking your, using your resources. <laughs> oh man. First of all, what the hell, right? And uh, secondly, I just had to leave that whole thing in. It was hilarious. At least it was hilarious to me. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about... Compose yourself. Today we're going to be talking about using your resources. Using the resources that you have. There's a lot of like FOMO online, right? FOMO as far as like fear of missing out on events and projects and sales and things like that. Well, there's also kind of a fear of missing out on having the right types of materials. There's a lot of people showing these great materials that they have or great studio spaces that they have or, you know, stockpile of like amazing different types of paints, spray paints, different types of machinery, you know, even just storage space, things like that. And it can be a little daunting for somebody who's getting started out or maybe not just getting started out, who's been doing it for a while, but just can't afford that much space, those many gadgets, that type of material. It's kind of like that song, right? If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. The essence is true, which is like, if you can't find and can't afford the perfect materials or perfect studio space, 
then love the ones you have or love the ones you're with. And I did that so many times in my career, painting out of kitchens, painting out of little corners of rooms, closet spaces, painting on a bed, painting on broken down easels. And you know what? I can tell you from experience that I really can't tell much of a difference between now that I have a big studio space and I can afford more materials and I can afford better materials and gadgets and storage space, I can't really tell much of a difference between the quality of what I was creating then and what I'm creating now. I mean, yeah, the styles have shifted a lot, but as far as just quality or execution of like ideas onto canvas, it's, you know, it's negligible. Like you can't really tell. And I still sell a lot of the pieces that I created. Some of those pieces are still my favorite pieces I've ever created that were created in a studio that I would build up and break down in my kitchen and my studio apartment where I could barely even breathe and had no heat. And yeah, I mean, I just was able to accomplish so much in that small area. So, you know, there's a couple lessons to be taken from this. One is like necessity is the mother of all invention. And I think that is true. Having to work with constraints, having to be inspired by the things that you have or that you can kind of throw together and come up with. And sometimes you can really come up with out-of-the-box ideas. I came up with a lot of my assemblage pieces because of those type of constraints. I came up with my little micro paintings, which really sparked a huge amount of sales for me and ideas and I was just basically going to antique stores and buying these tiny little frames that were really cool for like five, 10 bucks, and then coming up with pieces, little paintings on them on glass many times. And those things started selling like hotcakes and they gave me great ideas for bigger pieces. And so that's what I'm talking about. I almost kind of miss those days. And it's one of those things where I think we always do that. It's like, you hear the story of the person who is now very wealthy and they miss the times when they were poor because there was so much freedom there. And there was so much like, I don't know, access to new ideas. So you could just almost like pluck them out of the ether. And I think that's really true. It's been true for me. And I think I've kept that spirit alive, but it's something you have to remind yourself of because you can lose sight of that and just kind of get caught up in like, oh, I got to have the best materials. I got to have the absolute best acrylics or oil paints or the best spray paints or whatever. I got to have this new table. I've got to have this new saw, whatever it is you're working with. And I don't think that is true most of the times. I think really we are at our best sometimes when we are working with constraints or when we are being forced to think outside of the box because of those constraints or because of a limited amount of resources. And why is there this magic looking back on those eras when you didn't have everything you wanted, but you were creating at your very best? I think it's because we have that fire. You know what I mean? I think it's because despite all of the lack of resources that we have, it's that dream that keeps us going. The dream is what keeps us alive of advancing and getting to that point where we can do it. That almost like supersedes the lack that we experience in the moment. And that really keeps us going. And I think that's why people who continue to rise, and it's something that I subscribe to, is continuing to move the goalposts forward. Like, okay, I'm here. Oh my God, I can't wait till I'm here. Like, I really am shooting for this now and not getting complacent because that enables you to kind of keep that fire going and propel you forward because it's almost like having that limited resources mindset, not a lack mindset. You can have an abundance mindset while you're doing that, but okay, I'm not there yet, but I will get there. That kind of fire. That is very powerful. And Sometimes I think when artists get everything they want or when people get everything they want, it's like an embarrassment of riches and they lose that fire, the thing that got them started in the first place, the thing that got them out of bed in the morning to prove themselves and to prove themselves to the world and to the naysayers and the people from their family and friends who doubted them or whatever. Like That's what keeps them going and gets them motivated to do what they do. So it's important to kind of have a little bit of that mindset, I think, at every level that you're at. Okay, I'm here. Now you set your sights on, wow, well, say that a bunch of times, set your sights on. Now you set your sights on like a different goal. Like, okay, I'm here. I'm making a living as an artist. Well, now I want to be famous as an artist. Or now I want to, okay, I've sold to X amount of countries. Now I want to be in museums or whatever. You're always moving that goalpost forward, which is keeping that fire going. And just working with what you have. You're never going to have every single thing you want in life. And I think that's kind of a gift 
You know, it's learning to be present in what you have and look at what you have and think outside the box and go, you know what? Yeah, I can't afford these huge canvases right now, but I have this shed in the back that's an eyesore that I can break down and turn into some crazy, unique wooden piece or wooden sculpture or whatever you're doing. That's using the resources you have. And that's exciting. And that's what makes you feel like you're doing something actually not even think, but you really literally are doing something that nobody else could do because you're working with resources that only you have at your fingertips. It's not like store-bought canvas or store-bought spray paint or paints. It's like, these are the materials in the back of my house. These are organic materials that I'm kind of putting into a composition. So I think that's really exciting. And I think that's a lesson to us all to not think of ourselves as having a lack of resources, but thinking about ourselves having an abundance of, of resources at our fingertips. It's just a matter of skewing your perception a little bit and thinking outside of the box. That's what we did as kids. That's what we get to do as artists, as adults. And I think that's really exciting and empowering. So this was just a little something I was thinking about and wanted to share it with everybody. Hopefully you found it inspiring. Hopefully it's something that was maybe just a reminder for you, something you've thought of before, but oh yeah, I've kind of lost sight of that. Let me get back into it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please reach out as always if you have a moment on social media. Tell me what you thought about the episode. And I hope you all have a killer week and a creative one at that using the resources that you have. And we'll see you next time. I'm going to take us out. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.